so so you may uh, interpret that as a protocol stack. Uh, so the clock synchronization, startup, integration, and and click detection functions. Uh, those are kind of higher layer protocols that are, that are running in each of the components in the system. And now we basically discuss the, the, the permanence function, uh, which is a lower level function which sits below uh, this this, uh, this um, uh, synchronization protocols that we just discussed. So why, we, why would we need that at all? Um, so when we talk about TT Ethernet or Ethernet in general, um, the way that, that we realize the the partitioning and and uh, the integration of the different applications on the same network is basically by by having uh, three different traffic classes. So you can decide for each frame that you send on the network whether you will send this frame. Uh, as a time period frame, or as a rate constraint frame, or as a standard Ethernet frame. Uh, while rate constraint basically means, uh, or this is, this is the, the standard IFTX so avionics Ethernet uh, transmission, which is also similar to uh, the all the video bridging AVB Ethernet attempt. Uh, time triggered is uh, the thing that I just discussed in the in the motivation. So this is basically the synchronization synchronized uh, synchronized uh, synchronous communication paradigm and uh, non-critical standard Ethernet. This is basically the the asynchronous communication paradigm that that I discussed in the in the motivation. Uh, so the problem is that um, or the problem that the feature that the uh, Good thing that Ethernet provides or TT Ethernet provides is that you can have uh, different applications on the network, um, and depending on, on their criticality and on their uh, communication requirements, you can select uh, for each frame of of these of these applications uh, one of these these traffic classes, which says basically how and and when um, when this message has to send to the network. So this means, of course, that uh, if you look on a very simple network again, uh, like in this one, uh, that uh, you have um, quite a lot of things going on on the bus from a data flow perspective. So in general, the, the, the switch will integrate or serialize the, the, uh, the messages uh, received from, from the senders to serialize these messages uh, on the receiver link. And I don't want to go too much into detail on, on what uh, on how it's doing that. Uh, but one uh, problem remains. And as you have unsynchronized traffic on the network, uh, the problem is that you have to, to guarantee that the integration messages, the call set messages, the call set acknowledgement messages, uh, they will be transported to the network and you should be able to to recalculate um, the transport time through the network for the protocol messages uh, very precisely. So again, uh, if we uh, would assume that, that this again is, is, is a simple network and we say that in the senders and the end systems, they realize the, uh, that the synchronization master functionality and let's assume that uh, the switch realizes the um, compression function. Um, you have to uh, define a, a, a mechanism uh, that uh, integrates the, the, the synchronization messages with this regular data flow on the same network, and uh, in all. Uh, and this mechanism also requires you to uh, recalculate the, the error that was introduced by this integration with the data flow messages. And the permanence function is, is basically a, a method on how you can do that. Uh, it uh, ensures that you can 
use the same uh, physical medium uh, for your data flow as well as for your synchronization messages. Uh, so in general, uh, uh, we, we are looking at this problem. So assume that we had uh, one outgoing link, uh, let's say from a switch, on, on which already a, a data frame is transported. So looking at that scenario. So you have an outgoing link on which, uh, uh, let's see, an RFTX frame is transported. And uh, suddenly you, you reali realize that there is a higher priority, or there's a high priority protocol control frame, which may be an integration frame or a constant frame or a constant acknowledgement frame from the higher protocols that we discussed in the previous slides. So there is uh, basically three um, three options. You have three options to, to, to handle this situation. Uh, there is a first option of preemption, which basically means that uh, the data frame will be preempted and you'll send out the protocol control frame. Um, and after after the protocol frame, you, can, you continue with the data frame. Uh, but it turns out that in, in higher communication speeds, and uh, if you're talking about 100 megabit or a gigabit, um, this, this preemption approach is quite inefficient. So it's not a good candidate. Uh, there is a second approach, uh, which we call timely block. So as we are in a synchronized system, you can uh, just block the, the point in time when you expect that a, that a, that a uh, protocol control frame will, will, will be received. Uh, that solution has the, the drawback that this only works for integration frames, but it doesn't work for, for calls and calls and acknowledgement frames. So essentially, uh, the only the only option that that's left is what we call shuffling. It's basically a non non preemptive approach, and it just means well, uh, if you have uh, this situation where uh, you uh, send out or transmit a data frame uh, at a point in time when you have to transmit the protocol control frame, you just finish your transmission of the data frame and send the protocol control frame. Uh, as the, as the next message after the data frame. Okay. So this means, um, and we have this, this bold items in the uh, bottom of the slide. Uh, if a data message is relayed by a switch when a PCF arrives, so this is the contentious scenario that we discussed above, uh, the, the protocol control frame, as, uh, frame uh, is delayed until the real process of the data message is finished. So this, m this means that, that in the worst case, uh, your, your protocol control frame is delayed for the maximum size data message, plus some other, uh, uh, other protocol control frames that are already in progress as in, in, in transit. Uh, so in order to to handle this additional delay through the network, uh, the protocol control frames record their delay through the network. So this means that, for example, a switch uh, will add the delay that it's imposed on the protocol frame. Uh, it will add this. It will measure this delay and, and add this value inside the protocol control frame uh, once it delivers the frame fully in the network. Uh, these are the last two points. So the protocol control frames they will record the deal to the network. This means the protocol control frames they have a dedicated uh, field uh, in the payload in their payload, uh, which we call the, the not only V but which is typically called the transparent clock field. And all the components uh, from a sender to a receiver will add uh, their delay inside this uh, payload field.